To wrap up Takashi Nakamura week, we're taking a look at the only series he created. As director, scriptwriter, and character designer of this anime original, it's safe to say that Fantastic Children displays his full potential as a storyteller. Earlier this week, I covered Tree of Palm, Harmony, and Catnapped. Although Palm and Harmony displayed his talents as animation director popularized by his work in Akira, I always felt his stories lacked in characterization, plot progression, and exposition considering the time constraints of a film. Would the 26-episode Fantastic Children offer him enough space to rectify these issues? Let's find out. In a nutshell, Fantastic Children is a melange of mystery, action, history, science fiction, suspense, drama, and romance. While I usually criticize an anime for attempting to do too much, I felt the series successfully incorporated each genre by relegating each component to a specific arc that felt natural due to plot progression. The story is divided into three arcs. The first covers the mystery surrounding the children of Befort, a group of kids who've been spotted numerous times over 500 years, each time appearing to be the same age. Some researchers believe them to be vampires or demons that steal the life of children and inhabit their bodies. This arc plays out like a heavy mystery, favoring no specific protagonist. Instead, we're only given clues conveyed by numerous disjointed scenes vaguely depicting the extraordinary. Nevertheless, it's clear that we're jumping headfirst into a plot that's been in development for hundreds of years, and it's our job to assemble the pieces as we go along. I thoroughly enjoyed the experience of this mystery because there were so many clues racking my brain, I couldn't help but get to the next episode as fast as I could. You'd assume they'd be spoiling the mystique by portraying numerous scenes from the perspective of the before children, but this only served to deepen my intrigue. Instead of answers, we get more questions as we see them being hunted by a sea secret scientific organization with an apparent grey morality, as well as ominous spirits that endlessly haunt them. If I were to detail each of the clues I found fascinating, the video would be 10 minutes longer, and it might serve to hinder your enjoyment of the anime, so I think in this situation, less is more. While there appears to be no central protagonist by the first arc, a few characters are seemingly unrelated to the main plotline. For example, Toma and his family live on a deserted island littered with ancient ruins and relics one of my favorite anime aesthetics. One day by chance, he discovers a young girl resting on his island. Helga is a mistreated orphan who has an inkling of an indescribable purpose burning within her, a vision she sees and colors endlessly depicting the same abstract scene. Ironically, she's tied to the overarching mystery due to the death of another woman 100 years ago who devoted her entire life to painting the exact same image. I found a stark contrast between the intense mystery elements of the Befort children, Toma's carefree lifestyle, and Helga's dramatic efforts to escape the captivity of the orphanage. Although I was interested in each seemingly unrelated plot thread, I found myself amazed by the revelations approaching the second arc as they wind together, gradually revealing their significance in the overarching narrative. If the first arc is picking up pieces of a story hundreds of years in the making, the second arc is catching up to the present day situation and processing all of our recently discovered information. Although this arc doesn't answer all of our questions, it does enough to solidify our understanding and unify most of the plot threads into a linear direction pointing towards a specific end goal. Finally, the third arc is where this information is acted on and built upon reaching the climax and conclusion while answering the remainder of our questions. I began watching Fantastic Children totally in the dark due to my themed Nakamura week. I've been recommended the anime before, but I've never read the synopsis and was never told any of the specifics. By episode 10, I still had no idea what the anime was even about, which appears to be by design. It's an excellent anime for mystery fans, but it's tough to review considering any plot points after the first arc would be considered a spoiler. However, I felt that Fantastic Children repeatedly exceeded my expectations in every aspect. They initially bombard us with clues, but gradually transition over to a more stable and linear plot, allowing us to finally see the characters as characters instead of unknown puzzle pieces. While its mystery aspect hinders the traditional characterization of most of its cast except Toma and Helga, this is rectified in its second half through flashbacks. In fact, flashbacks are a crucial plot device used to fill our gaps while dropping our jaws in the process. 
While I won't spoil you, I will say there are many unexpected turns in the second half. The line of good and evil is blurred by a complex history of betrayal, greed, and jealousy which implicate just about everyone in an ancient tragedy. This leads to a somewhat morally grey climax where some of the characters reach the tipping point between the weight of their actions and their resolve. Suddenly, they're unsure if the value of their goal is worth the price and begin to falter. Most stories gradually build their plot in a general direction you'd expect. However, Fantastic Children leaves a series of breadcrumbs throughout 500 years of story. While it answers some of them, the remainder are just left hanging in the air. Then, around its conclusion, snaps them all together within three episodes, leaving you blindsided with an emotional black hole you were never expecting. The story begins with a few enigmatic children who may or may not be stealing people's souls, and it finishes with war, death, familial bonding, and even one of the more powerful bittersweet romance stories I've seen in anime. Fantastic Children is a complete experience I recommend everyone to check out. The anime portrays so many different genres well within its 26 episodes that I'm not sure how anyone wouldn't enjoy it. I give Fantastic Children a 9 out of 10. Anime like this are a major reason why I do what I do. Such a powerful emotional experience as well as an intriguing mystery that rarely gets talked about. Only 8,000 people on my anime list have ever completed it. I consider this to be severely underappreciated, but maybe we can change that. If you decide to check it out, come back and tell me what you think. Also, share this review with a friend so that they can experience the wonders of fantastic children without being spoiled. And that's not just a ploy to get more views either. Don't Google anything about this anime if you plan to watch it considering how easy it is to ruin the experience. In this review, I made a point to fully express myself while walking on eggshells to protect your overall experience. So I hope you enjoy it. Special thanks to Neachan for supporting the channel, and I'll hopefully see you tomorrow with my review of the Tetralogy of Evangelion Rebuild movies in one video. If not, I'll do a discussion video of some sorts, but either way, I'll see you then. Have an awesome day.